national flame. Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads as they spoon feed their paid piggies. Gotta keep them misled with blazing Lego vision. I see it all the time. Exposed in the agenda amidst these epic rhymes. Intellectual assault on the main street. Not in the current. Can burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, sorting mass facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hitting choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune, declaring war. Then you never knew By the time I press singular's approved Break your stories while you're chasing hunches I'm a new type Never pulling punches What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's evening where I am, where one of my guests is. It's morning, and he rolled out of bed to be here. I am gathering the Pond Scum Posse tonight. That's right. It's Pond Scum Legal Vices. How are you? Good. <laughs> and and we got Godzilla Tug here too. Uh welcome, Ponscum Posse. Rah! <laughs> Smash. I think this is how my pond scum guy talks. <laughs> <laughs> that actually fits, you know. Yeah. I got to wear my mustache. It's 8 a.m. I filed my motion to compel breakfast booze. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A, if you will. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Listen, for those of you in the chat who want to see us, uh, that's not how it works here in the night stream. I, <laughs> I, let, me, let me explain. By 7 p.m., I got my jammies on. I got my hair up in a bun, and I ain't putting on lipstick, okay? We're going from 7 to 10, maybe 11, and I am not in the mood. So uh, we're having a chill stream. Camera's off. Jammies on. Pants off, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't mean no one can. Hey, tell. Oh, yeah, that's me. Pants. Why yeah. hey, limit that. it there? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got eh, never mind. Pants are prison. Uh, so what are we going to do tonight? Well, Dave Neal is going to be here around 745. So he'll be, he'll be here in about a half an hour. So that gives us a half an hour to read John Douche Canoe's new motion. And it is the craziest. <laughs> it's the craziest Ooh. new motion. It's literally called motion to compel lunch <laughs> <laughs> I need <a> dinner <laughs> I'm surprised it, it takes him 11 <laughs> pages to ask a dude to have lunch with him <laughs> I, I haven't even sat down and read everything there you know it's, the, a, it's a bro brunch uh, a bro bunch does it set down the does it set down the specifics of what he's allowed to order or anything like that? <laughs> well, no, you know what? You know what's hilarious is that the the order that he's relying on uh, for president yeah, it, just, it, does. Just happens, it really does. Yeah. It's like you will only have the breadsticks and the salad and you will pay this much and you will pay this much and it's insane. So this is like actually a thing that has happened. Legal fights. Your camera. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> I didn't do that. What are you Damn doing, Vice? What are you doing? Good thing I was actually wearing a shirt. <laughs> That's why I don't. I, I don't. I don't have a camera on my computer for for <laughs> incidents like that because God oh. knows what might happen. <laughs> there. Now it's officially off, so that ain't happening again. Sweet <laughs> Jesus, that could have been interesting ten minutes ago. <laughs> Oh, wow. we're, gonna, we're gonna bring up Hi, this everybody. ridiculous motion um, because we—you just won't even believe it. Like you will not believe how stupid this is and how much fun it's going to be to read it. Yeah, and it does read like some sort of Bobby Fischer Boris Spassky chess match negotiations. <laughs> the board will weigh exactly this much. The timer <laughs> will be placed three centimeters. Yeah, it's, it's so R-worded. So weird, man. And by the way, let me just say that, and, and Dave talked about it publicly, so I guess I can I can also 
reiterate what he said. I just want you to take into consideration how we know this guy operates. He threatens. He threatens first. He goes in like a tornado, like that. What's that cartoon that whirls around like a dervish? The Tasmanian Tasmanian. devil. (laughs) Yes. He's like the Tasmanian devil. He comes in. He puts you up against the wall by your throat. And he makes, he makes, See, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> he makes all of these claims. And like, I'm starting to bread. like this guy. <laughs> Maybe, hey, can he bite me to bro brunch too? Yeah, does he have a female associate? <laughs> you guys are too funny. He makes all these threats and then suddenly he's like, oh, but I'm not the bad guy. You're the bad guy. Like, what? You're, I'm not the bad. What do you mean you're not the bad guy? No, you're, you're definitely the bad guy, sir. Oh, I've got the wrong screen. Um, and, and it, it makes me nuts because like to Dave, for instance, he's been publicly threatening Dave Neal with a uh, lawsuit for days on Twitter. And then he sends him an email, which I have read, but I'm not, I can't read it publicly yet. Um, he sends him an email and basically the email is, Hey, I'm ready to sue you, but I'm not threatening you. I'm a nice guy. Let's get along. How about you just regulate your speech and then we'll, we'll get along just fine. Just don't talk about my client or be very careful how you do, but I'm not a threatening guy. I'm a good guy. Cause you'll know when I'm threatening you mother effer. I'm a free speech lawyer. <laughs> it's so bizarre. So keep that in mind because for sure, this guy has already threatened uh, Clayton's lawyers, many of them, like several lawyers in the office. He has, he has threatened them. So if you're wondering how come they're uh, reticent to talk to him off the record, like not in writing, yeah, huh, that could be why. All right, here we go. Various procedural rules, e.g. Rule 9C, requires lawyers to talk in person or by phone before they may file motions. Email discussions are not enough. But what if a lawyer refuses to talk with you? And by the way, that is a lie. That This is a lie right here. I know it's a lie. She lied? I have sources. I know for a fact they have spoken to this man. So... What if a lawyer refuses to talk to you? He's lying. How can counsel complete the mandatory pre-filing conference requirements of Rule 9C when opposing counsel won't accept your calls? Hmm. <laughs> but, but that's a lie because they've been on the phone with him. Now, I don't know who's talked to him, but I know they've taken phone calls. I have sources. I know that they have spoken to him. And that's how I know that there have been some pretty nasty threats that were communicated between him and Clayton's lawyer's office. The answer was provided nearly 20 years ago in a classic decision from the irreplaceable Honorable Pendleton Gaines. What a brown noser. The irreplaceable. He's he's deceased, though. Yeah, in in, in, uh, parentheses, deceased. (laughs) He probably owns his bones or something. <laughs> He's got him right set the up. Elephant man. <laughs> <laughs> it's Physician's Choice of Arizona. He's like, that's man. what I call him, the Elephant Man. He'd be like, oh, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how it's going to be, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to be like that kind of stream. <laughs> I mean, it's just going to get worse when Dave Neal gets here. You I know, have, it's going to get worse. You I'm have a comedian, gonna... Megan. I know. Anyway, you know. My oh. child just fell down. <laughs> get shut up now. All right, here we go. We're going to try and get through at least one page of this. <laughs> is that what your aim is? <laughs> <laughs> it, only took, it, only, it only took illegal here, what, six years to go through. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It was like four score in seven years ago. I started the stream. Yeah. That was a six and a half hour live stream. That was insane. I, I just hate myself because right at the end, I realized I've just burned an entire week's worth of content in one stream. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from doing it, from breaking it down and doing it yeah, again. Break it down. <laughs> really, people would still in watch. In case you missed it the first time. They'd still watch. Because, by the way, remember when we were all confused about that HCG test? Yeah. Well, since then, 
I've spoken to an OBGYN and I showed him the document plus the other documents that were sent to me. And he explained it this way. A reading of that HCG level tells me that that's someone in the very early stages of pregnancy. But then I was like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no. Hold up. Back the train up. She says she's 17 weeks pregnant with twins at this point. And he goes, yeah, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, nice. wait a minute. What if, what if she's having a miscarriage? She's like, nope, nope. Mm way too low. And also you wouldn't know anything unless she had another test within 24 hours. Also, she went to a lab that is like a, any lab test now. So you can pay to get whatever lab result, you know, any lab test you want without a doctor's order. Why wouldn't she have a doctor's order and it be done in the OBGYN office where she gets seen? Cause she doesn't have one. Because no one has seen her for OBGYN. And it doesn't make any freaking sense unless... She lied? There it is. Okay. Moving on. The answer was provided nearly 20 years ago in this weird case with the elephant bones judge. A copy of which is attached here to as Exhibit A. And it really is funny. In Miller, plaintiff's counsel wanted to speak with defense counsel about a potential settlement. Defendant counsel refused to talk, citing various concerns. Undaunted plaintiff's counsel filed a motion to compel acceptance of lunch invitation. This is exactly, by the way, what Laura Owens did to Clayton Eckert. Oh, no. Yeah. I didn't even connect that, but yep. She filed early on in the case. Well, not only did she try and get him to, to sign a dating contract with her. If you with date intent. me, if you date me with intent, I'll have the abortion. If you don't, I'm having the babies. If I don't hear from you, I'm having the babies. Then she filed a motion to compel communication with Clayton in the court, which, of course, was dismissed. It was ridiculous. No one had ever seen such a thing. The judge is not going to force someone to talk to you, lady. This is a motion and, to compel lunch with intention. And so now we have her lawyer filing a motion to compel this dude to go to lunch with him. It's like, I'm sorry, sir, but he's just not that into you. No one wants to go to lunch with you. Like, qu quit trying to take Greg Woodnick. Zaddy Greg is married. I believe he has a family. Uh, back off, bro. This but he dude... almost met effing Johnny Depp. Almost met him. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want to lunch with, like, two degrees yeah. of separation? Yeah, from it's like effing Johnny Kevin Depp. Bacon. Yeah. And according uh, to the, according to the uh, email that I'm not allowed to read to you, he also had an encounter, a close encounter with Colin Farrell, and he could see the anger in Colin Farrell's eyes as Colin Farrell stared him down. See, you you know, you know that's so pathetic because people that like 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 for many of us, you know, we we end up talking to quite a few people, and yeah, you don't brag about it, you don't burn all these people yeah. in the yeah. aftermath, you know. But he's like, yeah, these people hired me. Guess what they said? I got them to tap. <laughs> I got them to write their name on my nipple so I could tattoo it. You <laughs> see? Colin Farrell gave me a tramp stamp. I don't understand is, this guy. Is that what the kids call it nowadays? I guess. <laughs> yeah. I have anxiety over the roof. All right. The court has rarely. Okay. It, or, oh, wait a minute. In asking the court to order recalcitrant defense counsel to meet for lunch, in his order granting the motion, Judge Gaines explained, the court has rarely seen a motion with more merit. <laughs> Why do I find that hard to believe? <laughs> the motion will be granted. The court has searched in vain in the Arizona rules of civil procedure and cases, as well as the leading treatises on federal and Arizona procedure to find specific support for plaintiff's motion. Finding none, the court concludes that motions of this type are so clearly within the inherent powers of the court and have been so routinely granted that they are non-controversial and require no prece precedential support. Non-controversial? Had it ever been done before? 
Oh, Rhea Norman wants to know who pays for the lunch. Rhea, we're getting there. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah that, you get all that. That's the... <laughs> See, I'm thinking this first one just started out as just sort of a joke amongst colleagues. That's what and it I, feels like. Judge, I, 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 wanna, I want you to compel my, my esteemed colleague to have lunch with me. And the judge's going, all right, that'd be pretty funny. Let's do this. Hey, Flux Raid. Welcome, Fluxers. Get on in here. Flux, if you're in the chat, love you, girlfriend. She finally got her bonnet. She looks adorable in it. Posted a picture of herself on Twitter. I got to get me one. Holy Flux shit. Ray. That's what I'm missing in my life. A bonnet. A hair bonnet. You got to yeah. have that. You got to well, have apparently, hair for your for your curly mullet. You're going to you need Apparently, one. we're not cool enough to get a nursing apron. <laughs> Well, you're not nursing any babies, are you? Is David nursing a baby? Well, his Just wife saying. will be. <laughs> yeah, but who gets to wear it? <laughs> oh, my God. Dave did say he was going to wear it. That would be <laughs> funny. I would like to see him do that. Uh... That would be funny. Um, it is a strange, like, contraption. It is a strange thing. But, like, I couldn't have lived without it. It was, I wanted to send Tasha some things that I couldn't live without. I know they weren't on her registry, but... Sometimes you don't know what you need, you know, especially first babies. You never know what you're going to need. So I wanted to send her some of my favorite things. And that nursing apron is one of the best things ever invented because uh, it, it it allows you to have eye contact with the baby while you're nursing in public and nobody else can see. Baby can see you. You can see the baby. Nobody can see anything else. So it's really it's it's a great invention. It's it's just great. And then I got her a necklace. Uh, that the baby can play with while nursing and also teeth on because it's you can wear it as jewelry, but you can also let your baby chew on it. And they love playing with necklaces. So this one is actually made for babies. Um, and I, I love those. My kids loved them and it kept them busy, too. And then I got her a, a nice summer blanket, which I don't think people think about like summertime in Tennessee. It's going to be hot, uh, but you still need a blanket. So you got to get one of those like. I don't know. What are they made out of linen or something? They're great. I used to love them. Anyway, I've gone down a mom rabbit hole. All right. The court has searched in vain. All right. I read that. Physician's Choice of Arizona Inc. v. Miller case number whatever. Minute entry order dated July 16th, 2006 at one emphasis added by the same authority. Undersigned counsel for petitioner Laura Owens, uh, a.k.a. John Dushkanu moves the court for an order requiring requiring respondents counsel Greg Woodnick to an ex, to accept an invitation to meet for lunch without needlessly delving into the details there has been a communication breakdown between counsel resulting in Mr. Woodnick refusing to speak with undersigned counsel by phone I don't know guys but if I were Greg Woodnick, I wouldn't speak to this douchebag on the phone either. I would make him put everything in writing because he says things. You saw how he says things on his blog and then he deletes them a day later. He said he couldn't wait to read our obituaries and throw them in the trash where we belong. <laughs> he called us pond scum. Lower cockroaches. cockroaches. We're just scurrying through the document. <laughs> Don't spread your left. fecal matter on his floor. Yeah, I feel left there. out. There's not enough people insulting me out there. Oh, you were probably included. I think you know, were included it? in that, Jeff. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm the honorary pond scum. The <laughs> yeah, he called us all pond scum, cockroaches. Like, this is a guy who doesn't have any compunction about saying things. He he says things before he thinks, and then he deletes it later. So can you imagine, I would never, just like I would never be alone in a room with Laura Owens, I would never be alone in a room with this guy either. No way. And if Greg has to meet him for lunch, if the judge orders it, I think I would rec I would require that I get to record the whole thing. <laughs> Bring a Netflix uh, freaking team with yeah. you, just like he did. Netflix right? hammer crew. I would respond to this by, I will be meeting him within the next 48 hours in a public location with everything being recorded, just like he, he responded to how he was going to be meeting up with his client in 48 hours. Right. This, this, this guy, is, this, this guy. This guy is unbelievable. <laughs> You're like, I, I didn't think people actually had uh, meals in a public restroom, but that's where he keeps inviting me to. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
<laughs> Allegedly. A, a, a public park off the highway. <laughs> it's like, hey, can we meet at the rest stop at uh, exit 47? <laughs> You're like, wait, wait, I, why? <laughs> He's like, well, that, that they don't promise dessert, but you definitely will have a happy ending. You know, <laughs> For some for some good legal briefs and a nice motion call. <laughs> Why does this guy want to want to be on a lunch date with Greg Woodnick so bad? I'm getting who concerned wouldn't? for Greg. <laughs> who wouldn't Who wouldn't want to go if you're if you're sort of the on that end of the alpha beta mode? Who wouldn't want to be there with an alpha man named Daddy Wood? <laughs> I want lunch with Daddy Woodnick. See if a little bit of that rubs off on me, so to speak. Wait. Jennifer Octok, thanks for the super chat, says, because we already know this is going to be worth every second of your time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate so, that. So, so Jeff, you're telling me he wants to rub his wood nick on him? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yuck. Uh, phrasing. Highway. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the $2. Pond scum posse pennies. I love it. Pond yeah. scum posse pennies. <laughs> Hey, we're also accepting that cockroach cash. If you want to send in that cockroach cash or that groupie train cash, uh, groupie cash train cash, whatever you want to send in, all the cash is accepted here. Oh man, I forgot to sign the stream. They can't send it to me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Larry. Wizzy Wheels, uh, thanks to the super chat. Or no, gifted one Fox membership. Welcome to the Fox Den. It's super weird in here. Okay. Uh, Mindy Mouse, thanks for the super chat. Says, how do you know you don't have any friends? You file a motion to make someone have lunch with you. That's the only way this guy gets a lunch date. He has to go to the court and demand one. Susan Scant, thanks for the super chat. AI bro brunch, please. Okay, well, it's it's interesting that you said that because <laughs> you I, was gonna, the I was gonna save this for when Dave got here, but we can always bring it back up. But because the chat already brought it up, Dave in his email in his uh video today, he was like, "What's that gonna be like? I'm gonna go. I want to be there. I want to be like a like a sports announcer." But Greg Woodnick is now moving for the butter, and you know, like. <laughs> So I made, I made some, now I said that the sports announcer guy should be wearing the short shorts, uh, but unfortunately they put them on Greg Woodnick. (laughs) 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 Look at this, look at this one. This one's good too. And why, why are the shorts, the shorts at the sport <laughs> coat is just making me scream. That was me for three years on every Zoom meeting I attended. <laughs> I absolutely love these. There are more too. Let's see. Where are the other ones? Okay. Here's a couple of, a couple more. A couple of more. Jesus. Look at that. <laughs> well, it wasn't working out so good. I like how there's a baseball stadium behind this one. Um, look at mask. this! Look at look at this! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dear God, there's there's only two of them, and they're sitting on the same side of the table. <laughs> look at the announcer's face. That's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. Why is Screech involved? <laughs> Oh man, I like that one. I <laughs> like Greg's good. face. Greg's face is so good. That's almost like, Phoenix right there. I like that they have a crowd behind them with headsets. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. Oh, and look, he's clearly he's upset because he had no lunch on his plate. He's <laughs> just got a document in front of him. He's yeah. taking copious notes. He's writing down every word uh, that the tramp stamp lawyer says. Covering his nether regions with strategically placed legal documents. <laughs> By the way, the local live chat is open. It is a special pond scum edition of the MeganFox.locals.com live chat for subscribers only. If you're not over there, you should get over there. That's probably where the memeing will be. I don't have it open right now, but I will. And I will check those memes as soon as I possibly can once we get through this. Uh, but I'm sure they're hilarious. So. Make sure you get over there and follow me over there. All right. Hashtag bro brunch. 
Uh, little B, new member, welcome to the Fox Den. It's so weird in here. I apologize ahead of time. Wizzy Wheels, thanks for the super chat, says, I have more PJs than normal clothes. Well, don't we all? Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat, says, P. Diddy, NDA vibes. <laughs> non disclosure vibes. <laughs> Oh, Chris Jenner says, I want to see Chris Hansen tell Laura to take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Bono, thanks for being a member for a month. Hey, Pond Scum Posse, hashtag cockroach cash for breadsticks. Love listening to you all. Yeah, do you get your breadstick money tonight, guys? Bread. Hey, do you think they'll go to Olive Garden? That's where this uh, lunch should happen. Awesome. That would be they'll awesome. If I were Greg, I would require that it happen at Olive Garden, but they were only allowed to order breadsticks. Just endless breadsticks. That's it. Zix, thanks for the super chat. Hey, I accepted the lunch invitation. Both said I was compelled to show up. <laughs> well, see, this is the interesting thing. That's almost read the title of this document again. It's the motion to is Okay, it's the motion to compel lunch, but then if you read down, it's the motion to compel acceptance of a lunch. It doesn't say attendance. Yeah, that is of a acceptance of an invitation. Yes. Yeah, that is kind of strange. It doesn't say actually, okay, yeah, I accept your invitation. Enjoy eating lunch alone. <laughs> yeah. I like this part. Without needlessly delving into the details. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I want to know the details. There has been a communication breakdown between counsel. Well, why? I kind of need the details, though. Mr. Woodnick may offer some explanation for why this has occurred, but that is mostly beside the point. <laughs> it's mostly all of Woodnick's excuses are beside the point. If Mr. Woodnick chooses to describe his reasons, it would ultimately be counterproductive since it would only lead to undersigned counsel to offer a detailed rebuttal. What? This would only expand the conflict and not narrow it. Yeah, you, but you're the dumbass who filed this. Okay, <laughs> let me just say, he still, to my knowledge, has not complied with the discovery order. So if you are Greg Woodnick... Would you meet with this guy if he still hasn't turned over the discovery that the judge ordered at the status hearing to be turned over? Hello? Oh, Hello? I thought that was rhetorical. <laughs> no, I'm asking you as a lawyer, would you meet with another lawyer if they had not complied with the discovery order and now they want to like, yeah, I don't know, I, try to settle with you, but you can't yeah, I, settle I would say there's no the reason. Discovery. I would say there's no reason to. I'll, I'll meet with you and talk about it as soon as you uh, give me everything we've asked for, but there's no point. I believe that's what's happened. I don't know. I don't have confirmation on that, but I would guess, my best educated guess is that that's probably what Greg said. And can you imagine being the judge in this case? The judge has been hearing all of this insanity for months, and now you get a motion like this on your desk? Oh my God, can you imagine what she's thinking? Seriously. Oh, I can imagine what she's thinking. It's what she's going to say. <laughs> what I'm interested in. I know oh, what yeah. she's thinking. Oh, she's so professional. She won't say anything. She'll keep all of her snark inside. Um, probably. But she may be throwing things in her office reading this. So instead of detailing the reasons leading to the communication breakdown, the undersigned offers some simple avowals to the court. One, undersigned counsel has now obtained a complete copy of Miss Owen's file from her former attorney, Corey Keith. Peace be upon him. We miss him so much. No further response has been received from Miss Lindvall's firm, but due to her brief participation in this matter, because she ran screaming for the hills, this is not a problem. The level of detail in Mr. Keith's files is sufficient to prepare this matter for trial. Two, upon reviewing Mr. Keith's files and looking at recent disclosures provided by Mr. Eckert's side, not from Owen's side, because we still haven't given up this stuff we were supposed to turn over, it is clear this case is extremely complicated. Now, guys, didn't he just say it was a very simple case in the last motion? Remember that? Yep. Uh, very well I remember in saying that but you know yeah. he says a lot of things you know oh god 
Uh, it's extremely complicated, and there are many factual and legal issues council needs to discuss urgently. To offer some specific examples, A, oh God, we're going to a lettered list now. 3A, just days ago on March 29th, 2024, Mr. Eckerd provided a second supplemental disclosure statement. In this document, Mr. Eckerd disclosed for the first time that he intends to call nine, nine witnesses at trial, including three experts who were not previously disclosed. D well, so what? You've got two months. It's not like three days before the trial. <laughs> Uh, despite this, Mr. Eckert has disclosed no expert reports of any kind, nor has he disclosed the substance of each expert's testimony, the opinions to be offered by the experts, if any, and the basis upon which the experts' opinions were formed. All of that information is mandatory under not only Rule 49, but also Arizona whatever, Daubert v. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Jeff, what do you think about that? Do you think he still has time to turn that stuff in? Do you think that's really a problem? do it why not well but do you think that it's a problem as far as that he hasn't turned it in yet we're two months away look they they are so far beyond their disclosure duties this discovery should have been done ages ago <laughs> well yeah i mean <laughs> owens hasn't turned over anything i'm anything, talking nothing. about clayton's side so he's saying that clayton side has not turned over the expert reports that they want to bring in for the trial so is that is Turn that unusual no. to have two months and you still haven't turned in your expert reports i mean maybe they're still working on well, it depends when he got them i mean he could have just gotten them now he could have gotten them last week I mean, there's still there. Two months is a is a very long time before trial. Actually, I mean, there's 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 lots of time to do lots of things. As long as you keep them updated, what you're doing, it's like, oh, we found this new witness. Here's what they're going to do. Here, here's what they're going to testify. It. I mean, you can essentially go right up to the wire, as long as the other side is fully aware of what's going on and knows things as soon as you know them. So I don't think there's a problem. I didn't know how that would. Uh... I didn't know how that would work exactly, you know, like you can go, uh, you know, because they I mean, she hasn't turned over anything, you know, they're, they've been playing this game. And of course, he's going to play the game of, oh, well, I need time to get it together. I need time to do this. I need time. We, to do that. Yeah. Uh oh, we've, we've lost our host. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> uh, the, someone has thrown the host in the dumpster. Well, <laughs> in the dumpster, crawl back <laughs> under that refrigerator. No, I, I, I mean, it's 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 a fluid situation. Now, if if he had all of this stuff, he had all these extra expert reports last year, then that might be a different conversation. But I mean, because it's kind of like just because one side is misbehaving doesn't mean you get to misbehave too. And it's right, always right. a good idea to to take the higher ground and go, we're doing it, but he's not. I mean, you could say he's not, so we're not, but. I always like to take the higher ground, do you, do especially if I'm right. Think, well, you, you would think with, with all the craziness that's gone on in this case already, you would think the judge has probably, no, you know, the judge has got to notice not just that, the uncooperation, but also all the nasty tactics. I'm back. Uh, Were you I'm good while even I was gone? A Not Jeff. Oh, God. You have no idea. He turned his camera on, and my God, yeah. you would not believe what was going on there. <laughs> Do I have, still have a channel? Have we been yeeted <laughs> <Yeah>. yet? <laughs> well, we, we, we were commenting that someone threw the, the host in the in the dumpster, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then he, I don't know, then Jeff started going outside, and he was filming a dumpster. Yeah. I don't know what was happening. I lost um, speaking of people <laughs> who should be in a dumpster, according to the douche canoe lawyer of all lawyers, it's Dave Neal, host of Bachelor Hour uh, podcast. <laughs> rawr, rawr. The, the fourth what? member of the, the pond, pond scum posse. Are you there, what? Dave? Can what an intro. Us? Motion to compel you guys to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> Are Only you if you pronounce Redskins? my name right. Litigation victory. That's me. That's me. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> no, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I clearly don't prepare any of my videos. Welcome to the club. You've Why been you so have... nice to me, too. You've been so kind. Prep. Why do you have a blank screen and no icon? I don't understand why it's all black. 
I don't know. I don't know how to do an icon. Weird. Oh, I can put an avatar. Okay, let me. Let yeah, me an avatar. Avatar. you need an avatar. You need your little pond scum Let's avatar. Let's do this until I find one. <laughs> oh, Miss Pond Scum Avatar. Oh look, um, that umbrella guy has. Oh my God, Becky! Oh my God. Look at her butt. It's amazing. <laughs> I love vacations. It's it's Wednesday, and I'm sitting here in my underwear, smoking a cigar, having a little bit of, of <laughs> Exhibit A for breakfast at eight fifty in the morning. I love this. Exhibit A. We lost Dave. Dave. Uh oh, I shouldn't Dave, have asked him back. to try an icon. <laughs> icon. <stop. laughs> I don't know what happened. We lost Dave. I'm here. Hey there. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. All right. Well, yeah, maybe Dave's still eclipsing. That could be. That could... <laughs> He's been raptured. <laughs> He's in the path of totality. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been in the path for like 10 months now. I'm sick of it. I, I'd like to get out of the path of totality, please. <laughs> I got I got two things going on. I got I got Jane Doe's falling in love with me, and I think uh, her lawyer wants to be pals. It's a bad combo. Her lawyer wants to is is like you know that's the only way he gets pals is to force people into it. Yeah. Okay. I think compel you know, Dave to like me. I was in a fraternity. I was on sports teams. I know what hazing's like. It's it doesn't. I don't. Why am I going to do a dick measuring contest with a porn star? You know what I mean. <laughs> like he's a lawyer why would i want to come in his court i'll stay in my court which is irreverent commentary that's it yeah well, you do so, know he almost met f and johnny depp true true i mean i mean that's and he did meet colin farrell and he got to look <sighs> deep into his frustrated eyes <laughs> and then that, <laughs> they're gonna make that, a movie about that he represented that other comedian <laughs> oh man i can't take it all right so he promised us though that he was going to write another blog post to go along uh-oh nope she's gone oh, no. take over <laughs> <laughs> am i gone again for real i, th I think i'm still here oh, now you're back that is so weird. Okay, well, it's bad news. I have a bad Wi-Fi signal. I don't know if there's like storms rolling in or what. Maybe you guys will just have to do this on your own. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, IT Goatee Brad is in the chat. Is in here. Hey. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I'm having some, some technical difficulties, Brad. Uh, so what else is new? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It's a problem. He appears, though, whenever that's happening. No, uh, I, I, I'm in the middle of giving little one a bath, and I, I something just occurred to me. Yeah. How great is it that uh, Douche Canoe uh, finds the one client that gives all of her ex-boyfriends relationship contracts and then compels a motion for lunch? I know. I, it's incredible. It's, it's If I didn't know that this guy was real... I would actually think that that he was that she was pretending to be him. That's what I would think. Yeah, my lawyer talked to him too. Otherwise, you if 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 uh, if someone didn't speak to him, you'd be wondering. And what was interesting, I'm sure you guys didn't watch my you know Iliad length uh, vlog today, but 39, I did it twice. Took Thirty nine minutes to get to the point, which was that. My lawyer asked his lawyer, or her, excuse me, her lawyer, um, are you familiar with when she fabricated those legal documents, you know, the letterheads from the lawyers? And he was like, no. So then he asked her, she said 100% false. And then she said, no, it's just a misunderstanding. And then I had to go back into the actual documents and show, I mean, it was wild what was written, which was her, you know, pretending to be a lawyer. And the only way she got away with it is because it's a family friend that probably stole, told her not never to do that again. All right. So you're going to have to explain this to me because literally, Dave, I listened to your vlog twice today trying to understand what happened. And you probably noticed from my text messages, you're probably like, what is she talking about? I didn't get it. I did not understand what was the response you got from Gingras. So let me get this straight. Here's what I got. Here's what I think I understand. Your lawyer responded to him to say what? Basically Here's to say, hey, hey, I'm going to be I'm going to be, you know, talking for Dave right now. And by the way, my lawyer's name's David. His name's David. I'm Dave. It's a three way <laughs> Dave off. It's a real <laughs> nobody needed this. It's so complicated. <laughs> Dave I, I, guess Dave about Dave. I, I guess 
Gingris wants his nickname to be Flash. I guess that's what they call him. So I, I personally have a rule of not calling people a nickname they want, but do with that right. what you want. Uh, I think it's because he had cool sunglasses on. I don't know. So my lawyer uh, calls or they, they get on a phone call and just basically says, are you aware of the alleged fabricated ultrasounds? And the guy goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, are you aware of the, you know, she fabricated uh, these legal documents? And he goes, no, I'm not aware of that. So then he calls Jane and Jane just says 100% false and then gives her statement, which then gets filtered through Flash, which is that, no, uh, it was a big misunderstanding. Uh, but it really wasn't. I mean, you know, uh, what what I guess Jane Doe said was, no, he never represented me, that lawyer. But the lawyer's Joe Cotchett, who she calls Uncle Joe, who I call Jodo Bird. So, <laughs> Jodo, Jodo Bird. Bird. Now, what's interesting is speech that came from Joe Cotchett, which we believe to be from her, involved saying shush in it, which is the same shush that Chase J. Jones said, which is not really important. But who the hell says shush? Yeah, and it didn't even make sense in the way that it was written. But are you telling me, though, that she has now changed her story about these emails? Her story is now that it was a misunderstanding and not that Greg Gillespie hacked her account and sent those emails and fabricated those emails? Because that's the story that she told on the court record during the Gillespie case. Yikes. I don't know. I, I would I would be interested to see what she initially said versus what she says now. But so anyway, here's the email that she says she got from her attorney, which she used on Greg Gillespie. And if you think of it as her writing this, it makes it sound, I mean, you guys know more about law than I do. Let me know if this sounds like what a lawyer would say. Everything you told us about pregnancy tests and ultrasounds aligned with the timing you provided us. There was no past pregnancies on your record and the three obstetricians you saw felt that pregnancy was very consistent with intercourse that took place between June 30th and July 1st. It must feel like you have the weight of the world on you, but I have no doubt that the jury will sympathize with your situation the next step is to fill out the attached retention agreement that's it wait but that's what she uh, sent you that's what that's what gingris sent you no today? That, no 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 that's what jane doe says her lawyer joe Cotchit sent her who wasn't really her lawyer right and then so what we have now from gingris was and again gingris to his credit, is only relaying what Jane Doe is saying because he was on the phone in his car. There's no way he would have looked this up. But he says, hey, Jane Doe says he was never her lawyer, and so that was the whole misunderstanding. It was just a legal friend. But then what this email shows is that he literally which we believe was her writing it, says, fill out the attached retention, or, excuse me, retention agreement. And then after says, uh, and then so you might go, well, who knows? Maybe this guy was never going to be her lawyer in the first place. Um, but Gingras accuses Woodnick of sort of, you know, piecing this all together in a way that's not necessarily ethical or making false judgments. But then the next paragraph of that email says, I'm ready to get started on this. The second you give me the go ahead, I'm always here for you and the whole family whenever you need me. And if you want me to go after this guy, I will make this case a top priority parentheses. Shush. That's what? It doesn't even make sense. Um, I'll tell you what yeah. the shush means. The shush means, hey, I'm, and again, this this is if Jane Doe wrote this as her fan fiction, right? But the shush means, I don't want anyone to know about this so that when Jane floats this email to Greg Gillespie, he must go, oh, this must be real. This is all on the DL, you know? Like, this is supposed to be a surprise, you know, that type of bullshit. So it's just all bullshit. And then he says this afterwards. Um, Allison sent me the retention agreement in medical files. This may be very, uh, uh, this may be very, a needy and we could make this a public interest story with the snap of a finger. So it's just a threat to Gillespie saying, Oh, the public's going to chew you apart. If you let us, that's all it was. Okay. Because let me pull this up real quick because I know I've, it's complicated.